Thank you very much. Um, I'm representing the Honorable Regional Minister, Honorable Dr. Archibald Yao Lecha. In fact, another equally important assignment has taken him off the office, and he has directed me, the Regional Economic Planning Officer, to be part of this ceremony. In fact, the uh, I want to say, in the first place, Honorable Representative of uh, the Minister of uh, MOFA and the Directors present, and again, the Chief Executive. We have some MPs here who want to acknowledge you. Our traditional authorities here, Togbo Mamao, opinion leaders present, and the Directors of VRA, and all key stakeholders. You will testify to the fact that Agriculture is one of the backbone and it's one of the drivers when it comes to rural transformation. Um, I've been part of this project in the monitoring process and uh, when the President, His Excellency, um, cut the sword somewhere in 2018, we saw this project as one of the game changers in our economy. And uh, its vision and aspiration is coming to reality. We'll be monitoring this project, and I believe that if we all put our shoulders under the wheel, Ghana will be a better place for all. I always say the Volta region is one of the best regions in Ghana. I always call this region as a microcosm of Ghana. Microcosm in the sense that whatever found in any part of Ghana can be found in Volta region. I hear the Volta, we have the sea, we have agricultural lands. We have hilly areas that we can grow coffee. We have tourism sites, waterfalls, monkey centuries, crocodile ponds. I, I see that can be equally, you know, you know, equated to the one of Paga. And the region is so blessed. It's also another peaceful area. Um, so I want to say that with the investors here, we want to say this is the right place to invest. If you want to invest, Volta region is the best place. And again, my original minister has asked me also to communicate to the investor, potential investors that are here, that uh, we've created the platform to showcase all whatever you'll be producing. We'll be organizing the Volta Fair, and this fair actually is coming on from, 20, on, from the 14th to 28th of November. Please take, take note of that. So if you are here and you are producing rice, you are producing whatever you are producing. We are inviting you to participate in this fair. It's a platform that we believe that we can use to project the region. It's a platform that we believe that can generate job opportunities when we do it well. And we need the investors to come and showcase it. And uh, we have some few flyers around we will share with you. On this note, uh, I want to say thank you for coming. And let's take opportunity of everything that will be said here and, and let's be act, act text and act well. Um, and I'll say thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to welcome you on behalf of the steering committee of the Ghana Agriculture Project, which is known as GCAP. And I, I wish to also express our appreciation for your response to our expression of interest to invest in the Pond Left Bank project as an agricultural entrepreneur. 
In fact, we had over 100 responses. Chairman, over a period of about four years, nearly 200 million Ghana cities has been spent to ensure that water is available for farming throughout the year on the 2,000 hectare land under command and 1,500 hectare of land out of command in Togome traditional area. And in a moment, we will take you through a PowerPoint presentation that will give you a deeper insight into the level of development undertaken under the Pong Left Bank Irrigation Project. GCAP is rehabilitating two existing irrigation schemes, Tondo in Navrongo in the Upper East region of Ghana, and Pong Irrigation Scheme in Asuchare Akusi, as the right side of the other side of the Volta River. These two, which are the largest irrigation schemes in Ghana, are utilized by only small scale farmers throughout. After over 30 years in operation, these schemes have run down and government had to intervene to rehabilitate them. The chairman, given the lessons learned, we have decided to introduce medium and large scale farming in the Pond Left Bank Irrigation Project with some provision made for small scale agrowers, especially the 21 communities surrounding the project site. A key intervention in all the schemes to ensure sustainability is the introduction of new scheme management entities called SME. These SMEs would work with water users associations to ensure that resources are productively used and accounted for through maintenance of key infrastructure, provision of adequate security, as well as sound environmental practices. There are numerous business opportunities that would complement the farming activities. Example, warehousing, transport, plant hiring and maintenance, housing, etc. And these are all opportunities that we invite you businessmen to look at. The chairman, I wish to acknowledge the following institutions and organizations who have provided invaluable support and input as technical and social partners. The World Bank and the IFC, Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Ghana Irrigation Development Authority, North Tongu District Assembly, Togo, Togome Traditional Council, Volta River Authority, Environmental Protection Agency, Ghana Investment Protection Council, and the Forestry Commission, as well as our consultants and contractors, Wapcos of India, OM Metals of India, Free Dog Company of Ghana, DHM Company of Ghana, GS International of China, Supreme Associates of Ghana, and Mechatronics of India who are providing the automation. To you, the prospective investor, whilst thanking you for responding to our invitation, let me state that we have confidence in your capacity, not only as the engine of growth as we usually say, but for us, we see you as a vehicle of growth, the real vehicle, not really the engine. So we invite you to kindly join us as we take you through the imperatives of investing in this novel project. Thank you. Mr. Chairman and Representative of the Regional Minister, the District Chief Executive of Non Tong, Honorable Members here present, the Man Kralo of Togweme Traditional Area, Chief Executives and Directors here present, the Minister's Chief Technical Advisor, 
the task team leader, World Bank, distinguished invited guests, our friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for your presence here this morning to participate in the Brown Left Bank Irrigation Project Investor Conference. The forum presents an important opportunity for greater insights into existing opportunities for investment in the Brown Left Bank Project specifically and irrigation in general. Undoubtedly, irrigation presents the best opportunity for unlocking the full potential of Ghana's agriculture. We must commend the Ghana Commercial Agricultural Project for this laudable, laudable initiative. We all know, Mr. Chairman, the contribution of agriculture to Ghana's economic development since independence. The sector has been the mainstay of Ghana's economy, serving as a source of livelihood for over 40% of the labor force, providing also our basic needs of food and nutrition, supporting industrialization, and raking in the badly needed foreign exchange for national development. On account of this public investment in our culture, has been a major priority of governments, present and past, albeit with varying levels of commitment and success. In the last four years, government, through the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, has left no one in doubt about its total commitment to transform Ghana's agriculture through numerous interventions. The interventions include mainly the flagship program, Planting for Fruit and Jobs, which has other models that address also very important subsectors of, the, of agriculture. The food crop model, the greenhouse technology model. We also have the tree crop model livestock development model and the mechanization model. All of these bear ample testimony to the commitment of government. While government strives to transform agriculture through these interventions, it continues also to grapple with major challenges that constitute setbacks and constantly threaten progress. The recent COVID-19 pandemic and the insidious climate change phenomenon are two forces which constitute the biggest threat to the transformation agenda for Ghana's agriculture. The adverse impact of the two on agriculture and the potential threat that it cont continues to pose to the sector is indeed a call to action. This is why the focus of this conference is very important. That is mainstreaming irrigation. There is no illusion about the fact that Ghana's agriculture is already affected by climate change with farmers experiencing the effects manifested by erratic rainfall that differ from historical patterns, high and rising temperatures, frequent droughts, floods, erosion, increase in post-harvest losses, and of course, loss of arable land through desertification. Currently, Ghana's agriculture is almost entirely rain-fed, as the country has only realized about 4% of its irrigation potential. Clearly, there is a need for greater investment 
in irrigation in Ghana is to build the needed resilience to combat climate change and of course, as we all know, the pandemic of COVID-19. Thankfully, the Ghana Commercial Agriculture Project of the Ministry has been a major vehicle for delivering irrigation projects in the country. And the GCAP, or the project, government is working assiduously to improve agricultural productivity and production among nucleus and smallholder commercial farmers. As part of the implementation arrangement, GCAP activities are focused on three main pillars. These are the rehabilitation and expanding wherever possible and modernizing of irrigation infrastructure, reforming irrigation institutions like the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority and ICOR. Three, sustainable utilization through efficient scheme management. Sustainable utilization through efficient scheme management. Currently, ladies and gentlemen, GCAP is undertaking the rehabilitation and modernization of the three major irrigation schemes, namely the Pong Irrigation Scheme in the Eastern and Greater Accra region, Tunnel Irrigation Scheme in the Upper East region, Pong Left Bank Irrigation Project located in the Volta region. The Pong Irrigation Scheme and the Pong Left Bank Irrigation Project will make available 4,000 and 2,490 hectares of irrigable land for all year round cultivation, respectively. At the Pond Left Bank Irrigation Project, government has added 3,300 hectares to the country's total irrigable stock. This irrigation scheme, therefore, offers a unique opportunity for commercial agriculture across the entire value chain. We expect to see resourceful commercial farmers taking advantage of this opportunity to increase economic activity within the project area and consequently increase paddy rice production levels by 14,000 metric tons, create 12,000 direct and indirect jobs, and improve incomes and livelihoods. Mr. Chairman, expected annual revenue from direct farm operations is estimated at over 30 million Ghana cities. In addition, the project will generate demand for downstream activities, including aggregation and haulage services, agro-processing, packaging, and marketing services. It is our expectation of, of the ministry that through this investor conference, your interest in participating in the scheme will be heightened and lead to your partnership with government to achieve full benefits of the investment that has been made by government. That said, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, I wish all of you fruitful deliberations, a mutually beneficial outcome of this conference. I thank you for your kind attention and may God bless us all. The, the Honorable Chair, uh, Representative of the Regional Minister, uh, the Representative of the Honorable Minister for Food and Agriculture, uh, Dritz uh, Executive, the traditional uh, authorities uh, from Togome, uh, Chief Executive of uh, the GIDA uh, Ghana Irrigation Development Authority, the director from uh, VRA, uh, my own uh, very good friend, the director of crop services, uh, Mr. Santi Krobia. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm really very excited to be part of this program. Uh, you know, irrig rehabilitation of irrigation uh, projects or irrigation schemes 
uh, it's really a very daunting uh, a task. So it gladdens uh, my heart to see that we are gradually moving to the next stage where we start utilizing the investment that the government has made. We all know that uh, this type of investment uh, is justified on a number of grounds. You know, there's increasing risk of uh, increasing risk associated with rainfall agriculture. Uh, there's also you know, a narrative that we want to change, the history of public uh, irrigation schemes. I, I think GIDA is already doing a lot of very good job uh, promoting integrated water resource management where the farmer themselves or the water user association are already taking you know, a very prominent uh, role. So I, I would like to commend the government of Ghana for deeming it fee to, you know, making this type of investment, which is really very critical to the transformation of the of agriculture in Ghana. Uh, but you know, I also want to use the opportunity to to task the relevant uh, institution. You know, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, the Drift Office, Office Office uh, Chief Executive Jida and all the relevant institutions have been part of the rehabilitation itself. Uh, so the, the encouragement I want to uh, solicit for now is that we need to make sure that we continue to you know, support the team as we move to the implementation of the program. Uh, because it's a project. And for every project, you must have a start date and an end date. But the down will still continue to be here. The irrigation schemes, we see. so we need to take advantage of the opportunity the government has hovered to the community to make sure that we maximize the benefit of, uh, of, of the, the facility. We want to change the narrative of irrigation schemes that are grossly underutilized. And that's why we are bringing in investors uh, from medium to large scale farmers who will, you know, work with our small older farmers, you know, bring them, you know, integrate them into the global value chain and also generate a lot of employment and uh, economic activities in the, in the uh, communities uh, around there. Uh, to our investors, you know, I I'm sure the team will be taking us through what we have. Uh, our expectation is that we are going to end up with investors that will be very committed you know, to the uh, investment on the schemes. We do not want an investor, an ab absentee investors, you know, who will come, get the, the, and then, you know, will disappear. We really want to maximize the investment that the government has put in, which means that we want investors who are going to be very serious minded, generate a lot of, uh, you know, jobs, but also economic growth. Uh, so please, uh, as we go through this process, we, this is our very modest uh, objective. And then, you know, it's a World Bank supported project. So all the processes are going to be, you know, done or carried out following the government of Ghana, but also the World Bank group, uh, you know, procedure for attracting investment to this type of uh, facility. So uh, on behalf of the, the bank, I would also I would like to thank, to commend the team for doing a good job. Uh, it's not over until it's over. So even though the project is closing in December, and that's why I spoke to MOFA, JIDA, and other relevant institutions, we need to take, we need to get more involved. And the traditional authority, the district chief, get more involved so that even when the project closes, you know, the institutions around we keep working with the farmers, working with the investors. The fact that we are getting private investors doesn't mean that the, the government will stop doing their job. Doesn't mean that GDA will stop, you know, providing oversight, you know, to how the schemes are, are run. So, uh, very happy to once again to be here. Uh, and then we hope that uh, at the end of the day, we we'll end up with investors uh, so that a few years down the line, when we, you know, visit or visit Ghana, We'll be very happy that we have been part of this very important uh,
project. Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, the project coordinator at GCAP, our distinguished investors, our honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, Miawe Zong. Yeah. Welcome to Togom Irrigation Project, officially known as the Pond Left Irrigation Project. We have so many things to discuss and address with GCAP regarding this project. But first and foremost, on behalf of the Togom Traditional Council and its subject, I am here to welcome you all and share our commitment and full support to the project, and especially to you, our cherished investors, on whom we waited to kickstart this project. We want to emphasize that for all who in their, in their good hearts seek to invest and farm on the Palm Left Bank irrigation project, and to live among us, you are warmly welcome to stay and enjoy our goodwill. We hope that as you stay, you enjoy a clear and fertile deshi. <laughs> and that before long, you make here your second home, if not the first. Now, let me share a little insight on the Bonded Bank irrigation project and state our position as the, as the traditional, Togoma traditional council. First, let me emphasize that we are the first owners of the Corn Left Bank irrigation project. The Corn Left Bank irrigation project, after decades of conception, was first realized by MIDA between 20, 2009 and 2013. MITA has then extended, uh, intended to develop a 2,000 hectares area to provide irrigated agricultural lands mainly for smallholder commercial agriculture. For that reason, about 1,600 of our farmers were organized and trained by MOFA agents across 18 communities in the project catchment area. Uh, Bertfro was identified as a main anchor farmer to provide technical support, market linkage, and the communities to us, the smallholder farmers, organized uh, under TATFU. That is the Government Area Cooperative Farmers Union. Then other mid-sized farmers uh, commercial farmers, uh, including Anyako Farms, Jokopan, etc., were identified identify to provide similar support services to our to us on FBO by FBO basis. Unfortunately, only 450 hectares net area was developed under MIDA, and 400 hectares allocated to 980 farmers from our communities. Unfortunately, again, after extensive agronomic training programs with Vetro, Vetro and other 10 mid-sized commercial farmers hardly provided any other support to our farmers. Farming activities started in 2014, but unfortunately, again, the farrow irrigation infrastructure was a little use to our farmers. Unless they could, could afford to lift water from the canals using pumping machines, the laterals could not deliver water directly to the individual farmers field. Lo and behold, GCAP came onto the scene in 2016 and commenced feasibility studies 
and design for the rehabilitation and expansion of the Ponlet Bank irrigation project from 450 hectares to 2,000 hectares. At that moment, we knew our God has not abandoned us. We welcome and support third GCAP throughout all uh, their activities. GCAP in turn engaged all our communities and assured us that all farmers will be allocated lands on the scheme after its completion. GCAP assured us that farmers interested in rice cultivation will be allocated at least a hectare each and an acre each for vegetable farmers. Now, it is worthy to note that apart from the 2,000 hectares land area for the Pondet Irrigation Project, Vetro has acquired 1,090 hectares. Goshen Farms has also acquired close to 1,500 acres. And Fresh Fields has also acquired some 1,000 acres, all within the project catchment area. This brings to total of 10,225 acres of lands acquired from the area, from the area. As it is stand now, we have nowhere else to go for our farming activities except to the K Conlet Bank Irrigation Project command area. All the lands acquired in the area were dispossessed our farmers of any alternative farm lands. The only land left are those under uh, the 2,000 hectare bond left bank irrigation project area. Hence, it will be suicidal for farmers from our communities to be denied fair and adequate land allocation within on the project. On this note, the Togoma Traditional Council and its subjects continue to welcome the support to the Bonlet Bank project. We are grateful to the government of Ghana, GCAP and MOFA for this project and how far it has come. Again, we welcome the investors to work on the scheme and to provide opportunities to our people and the people of Ghana at large. We will participate and work equally on the scheme, respecting every rules and regulations designed to ensure smooth and successful operation. Sustenance and viability of this scheme. But we insist that to tell of this uh, uh, project command lands must be allocated to our teaming youth and farmers numbering at least 1,600. Majority of these uh, farmers are women who are all ready and willing to farm on the project. Any other consideration that the project is a government investment, hence the need to allocate most of the lands to investors, farmers, to guarantee sustainability shall not be accepted. Other justifications, justifications that our lands were acquired by the government of Ghana, hence we have no say in how the funded bank project scheme stands and allocate such shall also be outrightly uh, and forcefully rejected. Other schemes such as Pong irrigation, irrigation Scheme at Astuary and Tono Irrigation Schemes were government invested investment projects, were built on government acquired lands, but were largely allocated to indigenous farmers. These farmers continue to benefit and improve their lives to our envy. 
and we expect to benefit equally from the, this project. Otherwise, we see no reason and justification for our participation and support of these projects. We will not be recruited merely as leverage for investors on our lands. Nonetheless, our youth who wish to provide their labor to investors on the Bonnet Bank are available in their teaming numbers. Mr. Chairman, on behalf of my people and myself, we wish to uh, re reiterate our commitment to this project and to all the investors here with the desire to invest and farm on it. The few other issues raised in this statement are minor issues that we are confident that GCAP will address. And once uh, addressed, we assure you that uh, we assure you that as we welcome you investors today, they are forever welcome. Thank you.